had time to think about the comparison between this plane and the R2, what do you think? I thought this airplane would be about equally spaced in performance and flying characteristics between the E model that I flew earlier and the R model. But it's very close. Its DNA is related much closer to the Model E than the R model. It's definitely a different feel. It's the engineering that went into the airplane was more towards the E model type, the Granville's early stuff. And then when Pete Miller came on board and went towards the R models, there's definitely I see a my sense of feeling in the airplane that's just down a different channel, a new wave. It looks more like an R model, but you say it flies more like an E model. Can you describe yes. what the difference is? The stick forces. This airplane has a much farther forward CG, so it's rock solid in the air. It's not divergent or anything like the R model. I prefer the sensitivity in the R model, and the, the ailerons are super light, and it's super light in pitch. And this one is rather stiff in pitch and yaw, and, and the roll rates. It's, it's very close to the feeling that I got flying the E model. Outside, of it's got all kinds of horsepower up front. It's really a hot rod as far as the wing loading and horsepower to weight ratios are very good in this airplane. Is wing loading about the same as in the R2? No, this airplane is much lighter, about 300 pounds lighter than my R2 with the same horsepower, same propeller, which the acceleration is, is very good with this airplane. What about the landing characteristics? There again, it's much more related to the E model as opposed to the R model. The R model, you have a feeling of riding a cannonball and following a cannonball because you can't see what's in it. And things are going by a lot faster. The time from when you see something till it's gone is much shorter. In this airplane, you can see farther down the runway. Although I'm using the same speeds, basically a little bit lower, the airplane stalls at 75 as opposed to 95 in the R2. But I'm still using the same speeds down the chute and for touchdown or whatever. And uh, but it's more related once you touch down. It's not flying characteristics, but the rollout is more related to the R model or the the E model. You don't have that riding the cannonball effect that the R model does. I think that's due to the visibility quite a bit. It seems like the uh, the acceleration must be a pretty good ride for you. Yes, it's like being shot out of a slingshot with this thing all the horsepower and it's a light small airframe it's it's good adrenaline on takeoff very good and the climb out it's superb what did it feel like sitting in there can you describe the personality of the airplane and the difference between this and you say the r2 is a happy little airplane or what's this the r2 has a happy feel and the ailerons and whatever and you want to roll it as i test flew the r1 and i rolled it right away and this airplane, it's, it doesn't have that. It's like a business, like we're going out there to go fast. Let's start over again because you said R1. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what was your question? The question is uh, the personalities between the two aircraft. The personality differences, that's one of the big differences. The R2, where it's, it has a happy feel about it, sensitive in the ailerons, and pitch it wants to roll on the test flight on the the R2 I rolled it right away and this airplane I it, it wasn't like that happy feeling it's a more a business like approach like we're going out there to go fast it doesn't have the sensitivity it's more of a rock solid airplane where the GBs were kind of divergent twitchy the GBR2 what uh, <coughs> what did it feel like rolling it The knife edge qualities are just as good as the R2. The, with the power to weight ratio, it just goes on forever. Over Indicating over 200 miles an hour, you can just go on forever. Similar to the R2. The roll rate, pitch, everything is just, it's stiff. 50% more pressures. 
which is makes 50% more work. You work up a sweat, and it's just not as fun. It's not a. It wasn't designed to be an aerobatic airplane, and that's really evident in this one. Where the R2, it, it's a really a happy sort of a character. Okay. Anything else you'd like to tell me about this? On a scale of one to ten, where would you rate it? Well, that's tough to do because every airplane has its own personality, and this airplane is a ten, and the R2 is a ten, and the E model was a ten, even the the tiny little E model. It had a really exhilarating climb out. It was only 145 horsepower, but you get off the ground and it's going slow, but it just climbs like a love six, love six angel. Every, every airplane has its own personality and you just go with the positive qualities that each airplane has. Obviously, they set out to accomplish what they did. They made, they wanted to make a very fast airplane, the fastest airplane in the world. And they got to that point with the R1, and they didn't just happen to be there. That took a, a lot of years and a lot of different designs they went through to reach that point. So they, they were very successful. The world speed record in the R1 stood for four years. No doubt they, they reached their goal. They had a lot of bad luck and just couldn't come back, couldn't, during the depression and stuff, they couldn't come back uh, and regain. I guess what I'm asking is, what do you think of the overall quality of the, of the designs that you've created? The quality of the GB design, it was top notch. When you look back, they were doing this during the 30s. That was the leading edge of technology in the 30s, high tech stuff. And airplanes today, wooden tube fabric airplanes built today, are no better than this one. There's been very few improvements from what the Granville, Granvilles were doing, and they in, pretty much invented it. They invented the technology, and it worked. So the reputation, you think, is, uh, is unearned for dangerous aircraft? Are you flown three of them now? Well, the, I've been around GBs for a while, and the stories, and it's your armchair, armchair pilots create the stories. The stuff that I've heard has virtually no reality to what I, I get in the airplanes and fly them, and they're all cool airplanes. They're fun to fly. And any airplane could kill me. I'd rather be killed by this airplane than a Cessna 150, but I know that they all can kill me just because I screw up, bust the airplane or something. It's not the airplane's fault. These were good airplanes. I think I've proved that the GBs, I've got over 700 hours, 10 times what all the GBs had on the R2. And I, I have virtually no problems. So I think I'm qualified to make the statement that it was the pilots flying the airplanes weren't up to the task. It wasn't the airplanes. It was all, the pilots, tend not to take responsibility for their errors so that it's easy to blame it on the airplane or blame it on the designer. In the Granville's case, it's all bogus. The airplanes were excellent little airplanes. The pilots crashed them. <laughs>